following the popularity of my last video on a custom web search agent that I developed with Langgraph, many of you asked how to integrate Olama into the Langgraph web search agent. So in this video, as promised, I will deliver that. I'll show you how I built an integration with Olama into the custom Langgraph web search agent that then you can use for yourself. As usual, the repository containing the code for this project will be available to you in the description to this video. So feel free to check that out and follow along if you wish. Since I've already done a run through of the custom web search agent, I'm not going to do a detailed run through of the Python code today. I'll just be focusing strictly on the Olama integration. I'll also mention my preferred method of working with open source models to run this custom web search agent. If you like this content, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more AI engineering content. All right, let's dive in. Integrating Olama or any other inference server into your large language model project can be daunting on the surface, but actually when you get under the hood, it's pretty simple. So in the most basic sense of things, you have to understand what's happening under the hood. Let's take a look at what's happening with OpenAI first. When you integrate OpenAI into your application, what you're doing is you're actually making a post request to a remote OpenAI server. So those are the computers hosted by OpenAI that hold all of the large language model and all of the infrastructure associated with it. So you're sending your data over, and that could be a prompt or something to those computers, and that computer delivers a response back to your local computer, which we'll call your client. For Olama, it's slightly different. So it's different in the sense that when you're sending that post request, you're not sending it to a remote server. Instead, you're actually sending that post request over to a local server that is on your laptop, and that's the Olama server. And then you'll receive a response from that server back to your application where you would like to use the large language model response. The key things to note here are that there are three main differences that you've got to pay attention to if you're looking to integrate Olama into any application that you've built, if the application is already working off OpenAI, let's say. The first thing is the endpoint, the endpoint in which you're sending your post request to. So where you send your, your data that contains the prompt or anything to, that endpoint is going to be different for local versus remote, and specifically for the Olama case versus the OpenAI case, that endpoint will be different. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the post request itself. So the data packet that you send over takes a different form when you're sending it via the Olama route versus the OpenAI route. And the third thing is the response. The response takes a different form when you receive it via the Olama route versus the OpenAI route. So you have to make sure that your application deals with all of these aspects. So what you see on the left-hand side is the format of the post request that you would send to Olama. And you can see how this differs from the format of the post request that you would send if you're using the OpenAI server. Now, listen, if you're using an abstraction on top of the OpenAI server, something from Langchain, this is all done behind the scenes for you, but this is the nature of the post request that you send over to the OpenAI server. So you can see how that looks different to Olama. Obviously, when you're building your applications, you have to account for this because anything that you're sending via OpenAI is going to take this form. Anything that you're sending via Olama will take this form. So it just requires some minor adjustments in the code to make sure you're sending your data over to the right server in the right form. Let's look at how we receive data back. When you receive data back from the Olama server, this is what you receive. And for most people, the most important thing that you want to capture is the response, which will come here. The key thing to understand here is when you're passing this dictionary that you received back from the Olama server, you are passing it in a different way to the one that you received back from the OpenAI server. And I'm going to show you what the OpenAI server response looks like in general in a minute. So when you send information to the OpenAI server and you receive a response back, this is the dictionary that you receive. And you can see here, the response from the model is now in this content bit. And you pass this dictionary in a very different way than you would pass the Olama dictionary. That's the key thing. Those are the, those are the three things that you need to pay attention to. So the first one is the end, end point. 
the endpoint at which you're sending your request to the model to is different for Olama versus OpenAI. The second one is the post request itself, what you're sending, the data is sent in a different format for Olama versus OpenAI. And the third one is the response. So you receive the response in a different format, Olama versus OpenAI. That's it. Let's get into Python code and see how I've actually implemented this for my LangGraph web search agent. I want to spend a bit of time talking to you about the code aspect of integrating Olama into this LangGraph web search agent. And specifically, I want to give you the ability to be able to integrate any other service into this LangGraph web search agent if you so wish. So, you know, people have mentioned things like wanting to try this out with the Claude models from Anthropic. So if you want to integrate any other service in here, pay attention to this because this should help you, should give you the philosophy of how I've designed this so that you can integrate any other service. What I've done to try and make it easy to integrate things like Olama or self-hosted BLLM models, for example, is that I've separated out the model component from the agent component. So the model component is where you do all of the things that you need to do to be able to use a large language model-based service. So whether that is the local one, Olama, whether it's any other service like Mistral, AI, Claude, whatever, you should be able to integrate it following this general pattern. So the general pattern is this. Recall that we talked about three main points that you need to be aware of. The endpoint, so the endpoint of the service you're connecting to, the data you're posting to that service and the format of that data, and also how you're passing the response for that. So how I've done this with Olama is I've created this class, this Olama model class, and there's two of these. I have one for when I want the model to return a JSON, and I have one for when I want the model to just return the standard text generation. So to work with this web search agent, you need to define both classes. You need one for working with JSON and one for working with standard text generation. The good news is they shouldn't be that different from each other. With Olama, what I've done is I've initiated the class with the endpoint. And the Olama endpoint is always this local host, this endpoint that you can see on screen here. So that makes things simple. So that's the first part addressed. You initiate with the endpoint. The second thing is within this invoke method. So within the invoke method, that's where we're actually sending that post request to the large language model service that we're using. So you can see here, I have this payload. That payload is that post request. So when we were talking about the second point about the data and how that's structured to send to the post request, what you will do is when you're doing your own version, um, when you're integrating another service, you have to make sure this payload is structured in a way that is required by the service you're integrating with. So that's really important for Olama. It's pretty straightforward. It's as you see on screen. It would vary slightly depending on the service you're using. You won't, you'll probably not need to change any of this. This is just using the request library to send that data across. So you can see we've specified the endpoint, the headers. So this is just a JSON header and the data, and the data is that payload. So that's really simple. If you've used a request library, you'll see this as familiar. And then the last part, and the last part is really key. The last part is how we pass the response from the large language model service. So I already showed you in the slides before that depending on what service you use, the response comes back differently. So in this case, the response comes back in such a way that we need to pass the response key from the JSON dictionary or the dictionary that comes back from that request. So that's what we have here. That's all done here. So you may need to adapt this part as well if you're using this with another service. So if you want to include another service into this web search agent script, you will need to adjust this. How I would advise you to do this is I would advise you to take to create a new module under models. So if you wanted to connect Claude, for example, I would create a new module here and call it Claude models 
Py, I would copy and paste the scripts into that module and make the changes that I've suggested. So just to go through that again, you'll need to adapt the endpoint. You will need to also adapt the payload. And you will most probably need to adapt the response bit here. So how you're passing that response. And if you just remember those three criteria, you should be able to work this with any large language model service. And the code is set up so that when you're working with the agents, all you have to do is navigate to the agent script. And for each agent, if you're including a new service in there, what you want to do is add to this if statement um, or to this series of if statements. So if you're using Claude, you would add if server um, is Claude, and then you would put the large language model um, variable equivalent to the Claude you would just you you would initialize a large language model variable um, object with your Claude class that you've created. Once that's initialized, this should work smoothly with the other aspects of the script. And I'll show you how you actually get ready running with the Olama model if you want to run with that. So what you do is you navigate to app.py. App.py is the kind of makeshift front end for this. And if you're working with Olama, you'll have the Olama uncommented. And you'll make sure the server points to Olama. You'll give your model and you'll set the endpoint and make sure that endpoint is set to none. You need the endpoint to be assigned as a variable, but it should be assigned to none. In this case, it's not going to be used for Olama because we've already set our endpoint in the back. And that's it. You can run any Olama model given that your hardware is appropriate to run it using this custom land graph web search agent. I mentioned earlier that you will have to initialize both a JSON version of the model and also a normal text generation. I'd just like to show you what that looks like. So you have the JSON class here for Olama and you have the normal version that just returns normal text generation. These are pretty much identical. You can see the endpoint is the same. The payload is almost the same. The difference here is that instead of having a JSON key, you don't have a JSON key. So the prompt format isn't, isn't JSON. I'll show you what that looks like really quickly. So you can see here, prompt format, JSON. And for the non-JSON variety, you don't have one. And then the response is also passed slightly differently because you're just returning a text string rather than a JSON for the non-JSON class here. So bear that in mind, any, any service that you want to integrate, you'll need to find a way to integrate JSON and non-JSON. So I have done another integration and that's using a VLLM inference server. Some of you might have seen my videos before on how to get your own VLLM inference server set up on a service called Rampod. I'll show you really quickly what that looks like so you can see what it looks like to have this integration with VLLM rather than Olama. So if I navigate to the VLLM tab, you can see I've got the JSON model and the non-JSON here. So where VLLM is different is that VLLM provides you with an inference server that mimics the OpenAI inference server. What that means is the payload that you send, the payload, the, the data that you send, the post requests, is different, is, is the same as OpenAI, apologies. So what that means is the data that you send across to a server looks the same as the OpenAI format. And you can see this here. Here's the payload, and that might look familiar to you because that's similar to what I showed you earlier on the slides. Now, for certain models, for example, the Mistral models, they don't take a system prompt in the same way. So the payload looks slightly different. So there's an if statement here that if you're using Mistral, if you're using Mistral AI models, and these are the open source ones, then your, your payload that you send takes this format. But you can see all that's changed here is the endpoint. So in this case, the endpoint is dynamic because we're connecting to a remote server. 
So the endpoint is dynamic and you will have to enter that endpoint if you're using the VLLM hosted server. The data payload is also different from the Olama version. And then the way we pass the response is different. So instead of just passing the response key, we need to go to choices, message, and then content. And this is similar for the VLLM model. Where it's different is that we're not returning the JSON output this time. Now I could do a whole section on how to return a JSON output using open source um, large language models. So if you're interested in that, just let me know in the comments section. I can go into more detail about how to return JSON outputs from open source large language models. Let me know if you're interested in the comments section. That's it for how to get set up with different large language model services using this LangGraph custom web search agent that I've built. You feel free to integrate whatever services you want in there. As I said, the GitHub repo containing this project is going to be available to you in the link to this video. So check that out and, um, and um, feel free to adapt that as you want. I have already integrated Olama, so you only need to do that yourself. So I think this is my third or fourth project, trying out Olama with some kind of custom web search agent. And I've tried different approaches. I've tried approaches using existing frameworks like Crew AI and also Autogen. I've also tried to build my own custom framework and I've tried the Langgraph approach. And I think, look, I think the Langgraph approach is probably one of the better ones I've tried. However, I don't think I'm ever going to get custom agents to work well with the local models. And here's why. I've got hardware restrictions. I've got a very small GPU on this laptop that I'm using. So all the models have to run on my CPU. And that limits me to, first of all, quantized models, and secondly, smaller models. It's completely impractical for me to run any model that's over the 22 billion parameter mark. It just takes too long and doesn't really work. The smaller models that I've used, and I'm going to pull up on screen now, Llama 3 8 billion instruct. As I was using Llama 3 8 billion instruct, I found that it did work well for some part of the workflow. So the planner and the researcher and even the reporter worked well. But by the time I got down to the reviewer, the model was unable to produce the JSON output in the correct format that I needed. And that caused the workflow to error. This might be something to do with the context size growing by that point, because the reviewer has the largest context of all of those, those um, agents. And I even tried it with the gradient version of the model, which has an extended context window, and I was still running into this issue. I just think the smaller models are not suitable for running agent workflows, especially when it requires some kind of complex reasoning. And as you can see, the question that I tested it with was not even complex. It was literally just to test the workflow with a local model to see if it could actually complete. And it was nowhere near reliable enough. So what I'm willing to do, if you're interested in seeing it, is I'm willing to host a few models on RunPod using my VLLM server. So I'm going to stand up a VLLM inference server on RunPod, and I'll host a few models. And I'll run through this custom LangGraph web search agent and even benchmark it if you want. And you can see how well each of those models perform. If you're up for that, please let me know in the comments section which models you'd like me to test. And I can get started on that and deliver a video for you. If you like this content, feel free to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more large language model and AI engineering content. Thanks for tuning in again, and I'll see you next time.